is eating? Why? What was your diet like? I remember... Sushi. Sushi? I thought you said you were a crab. What? You think crabs aren't dexterous enough to make sushi? Unquestionably, yes! What is this sushi? It's delicious, is what it is. Rice and fish and seaweed. Humans eat it. And crabs. I just don't know where a crab would find rice or a way to make good sushi. I also ate garbage. Yes, I also ate garbage on occasion. Unbelievable, you two. Unbelievable. Garbage is good for the soul. Garbage is garbage. It's in the name. What did you eat when you were alive then? Grass. Just normal grass. Maybe you were like a cow or something. Boring. And tree roots sometimes? There are tree roots here, yes? Yeah, there are. Why don't you shop on them? Well, I'm not hungry. We don't eat. And also, more importantly, they're magically, they're powerfully magical. Maddie needs them. If we damage things that Maddie needs, then Ashley will be disappointed in us. A suboptimal state of affairs. I can feel the power in them, too. However, I do not feel compelled to chomp on them. What a strange thought. Love to chomp. Chomp sushi, chomp sandwiches, chomp garbage. You're so weird. Wow, that was, that was one of the more insightful conversations we've heard from anybody in the entire cafe. I can't believe how much we learned. Holy crap, that's a lot of words. Communism. <laughs> what you did? Gifted? Sins. Mm, lie. Copper cable? Maybe. How about that? Not that we're really gonna be needing these. Communism, Melbourne. <laughs> Copper cable, lore. Sins, Ned. Oh. What you did, Maddie. Gifted, guests. Maybe, food. What? Oh, what? What, how, how is maybe food? Lie is death. Some of them you can kind of predict, but most of them are just kind of like, okay. Fate of Icarus. No, thank you. No. This was when they were talking about how Ashley recently read about Icarus. Where are we? Something down under. Hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the room where they were playing board games, right? But for some reason, there was like 20 of these beanbags in here. And a half-broken, half-fixed machine. A letter from Sophie Cordova. Okay. My dear Maddie, thank you for getting in touch with me. Or perhaps I should say, congratulations. I make such a point of making myself hard to find that it's always a surprise to hear from anyone. I sometimes find myself fearing the day when I'll be contacted by someone who isn't a fan of mine and who is more interested in locking me away than seeking my advice. Okay, Maddie contacted this person, Sophie Cordova. Is it an author or? One might think that people interested in putting me away would be more capable and in possession of more resources than those like yourself who simply possess curiosity. And yet, it's always a ladder who managed to break through the veil I've erected between myself and the outside world. Okay, it doesn't sound like an author, sounds like whoever is in the ritual. You're the first in over three years to manage this. And so, it is now time for me to find another hiding place. If your next letter manages to find me, I'll truly have something to worry about. 
If you're looking for a solution to the problem you outline in your letter, I'm afraid I must disappoint you. My business is that of teaching people how to ask the right questions so that they can find the answers themselves, not giving the answers. After all, the most worthwhile answers are the ones I haven't found yet. That being said, your question about time transference is an issue of special interest to me. The idea of storing vitality within a living, non-sentient creature, such as a plant, is one that I've long considered. Mm, what Maddie was doing, she said she stored time in the tree. Somehow. Does the tree need time? But then earlier, Ned was saying how time stealing time from plants feels dirty. The issue has always been one of retrieval. If you did find a way to transfer vitality from a plant into a sentient creature, it would result in a tremendous dis discharge of energy. Such a great discharge that I'm sure it would kill whatever subject was on the receiving end. Absorbing life force from something doesn't seem like it would do you much good if it kills you in the process. Consequently, I've never experimented with this process myself. Even if I have earned the reputation for being a rule breaker, there are certain things that are simply off limits. Your idea of using a non-living soul as a target for transference is an interesting one. No risk of killing the vitality recipient if it's already dead. Of course, that would require finding a way to infuse a non-living soul with vitality in the first place. And being that most reanimation techniques involve a significant discharge of energy, using the vitality transfer as a trigger would effectively be killing two birds with one stone. Of course, reanimation is a far cry from necromancy, but if your only problem is one of living on borrowed time, well, you know better than I do how to resolve the particulars. I'm an alchemist, not a necromancer. If I can offer you one piece of advice, these kinds of vitality transfers are not something to be experimented with. Any time that time is borrowed or lent, you are making an alteration to a ledger that the powers that be keep a very careful eye on. Even the smallest of disturbances is enough to attract their own notice, and attracting their notice will put a quick end to any research you might be in the midst of. So, if you're gonna try vitality transference, don't experiment, go straight for the end goal. If you're gonna catch the attention of those whose attention you do not want, make sure the endeavor is worthwhile. If you have a good reputation, it would be a shame to squander it on something so trivial as allowing a mouse a few extra seconds on this side of mortality. As they say, go big or go home. I appreciate your taking the time to write to me. You've given me new things to pontificate on, and perhaps one day, you may see the results of that pontification in one of my future volumes. Of course, it should go without saying that you wouldn't be able to reach me again, at least not the same way you did before. I've been found, and that means I need to do a better job of covering my tracks. While I rationally hope that I'll never find myself in a position where a fan's letter finds me, there is always a part of me that hopes that one of my readers will manage to track me down. Who knows? Maybe the next letter I receive at my next residence will come from you. But I'm sure that you have better things to do with your time than try to track me down. Like, try a time transference ritual? There is a time to adopt the posture of a student and focus on learning, but it's obvious to me that you are someone who has spent plenty of time learning things and is now ready to do things. So do things, Maddie. Do big things, do dangerous things, do things that break the rules. Not all rules need to be broken, but if you're smart enough to find me, you're smart enough to know which rules are worth breaking. I'm grateful that it's always a reader mail that seems to find me, and never the demands to appear before some kind of tribunal or committee. I used to think that this was a long string of extremely good luck on my part, but over time, I've come to realize that those who wish me gone lack the insight of the people who earnestly read my work, readers such as yourself, who are the only ones who truly know me well enough to understand how I think, and where I would hide. Bravo, Maddie. You've demonstrated your ability to think like me. Now, you must learn to think like yourself. Yours truly, Sophie Cordova. So it sounds like some kind of a exiled alchemist on the run, and Maddie was asking her for advice. This tree... Advice on this so-called ritual. Time, transference, vitality transference ritual. Well, but then... Ashley and Maddie said that they tried it before and it failed really badly. Does that count as an experiment then? Because this lady was saying, don't even try, just do it. Because if we get caught... Don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness was the basic gist of it, right?
We're all ready. 10 p.m. Is Kishan still here? If he is, that means he would have been here for about 30 hours already. He should be really itchy. Hello? Huh! What was that? I said, can I get two lattes? Uh, yeah, sure thing. You want those take away or not? For here, please. Go take a seat. I'll bring it over. Oh, crap. Oh, I dropped it. You right, mate? Yeah, all good. <sighs> I should really get Ashley to do this. Sorry, what? Nothing, just talking to myself. All right. Ugh. Where's the broom? Ashley! Where's the broom? Ashley? Oh, does Che not know that they're doing the ritual? Ugh. Oh, she's sleeping, that's right. I need a hand! Come help me! Uh, come on, I've gotta find a broom. Uh, a girl. <laughs> Her nap. Her poor nap. <laughs> hmm. Hey, are any of your friends around? You mean the little robot guys? Probably. <laughs> Whoa! When did you teach him to do that? I didn't. That one's just weird. Uh huh. How you doing, kiddo? Sleep deprivation's kicking in. Hmm. Sometimes I feel like nobody ever sleeps in this cafe. Except Kashan. <laughs> he has slept a lot while he's been here, hasn't he? It's because you keep getting him drunk. What? I haven't done that once. Not you, you. I mean... You. Me? So, not me at all, but Maddie and Ned. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, them. Mm-hmm. Those brigands. You're telling me. How's Maddie doing? Well... Phew. How close are we to being done? Fairly close. I'm not super worried about getting it done without Ashley, either. Right. Anyway, what were you saying? Oh, just... just that I think I understand everything now. Everything? And... That's all. Well, I appreciate your restraint in not generously supplying me with your moral take on it. Oh! Did Maddie tell Kashana about what she did that's so sinful? <laughs> no worries. Don't want to be that guy. Dang, I'm actually gonna miss you once you're gone. Wow, are those some honest feelings coming from you? Uh... Doth thy icy facade crack? Does Maddie seem like the kind of person who hides behind a mask? Mmm... She's very abrasive. But, it doesn't mean she's not hiding anything. The correct word there is dost, and please, don't make me take it back. <laughs> I guess you really got into the whole Boatman of the River Styx thing, huh? If you ever find yourself on the Styx, be sure to give the Boatman a friendly Domo Arigato. Are they Japanese? <laughs> is that what you think I am? A Grim Reaper? The Styx's Boatman? Kind of, yeah. Interesting. Do you not feel that way? I don't know if the metaphor is that accurate, but... I can see why you draw parallels, but this place serves more as a... Um, hmm... An entrance? You don't have to come here on your way to the next place, but it's on the route, for sure. Just a stopping point on the highway to hell. I'm sorry, we don't allow ACDC references in here anymore. 
Axel Rose is a cautionary tale to those who would rather fade in than burn away. <laughs> I don't know much about ACDC, besides knowing it exists. Well, I tried. We're less on a highway and more just, uh, an embouchure to the Empyrean. If you want to get real fancy with the wording, that is. <laughs> an entrance to heaven? Very roughly speaking, yeah. But hell, I haven't seen the other side, so I can't even say that for sure. I'm fairly certain there's something there though, which, uh, I don't know. I can take comfort in that, I guess. I can take comfort in that, I guess. Oh, and speaking of comfort, how are you feeling? Like every particle in my body is slowly moving away from every particle in my body. But you're not glowing green. How are you even standing here? Like, don't you want to go? That was rather eloquent. What use is feeling pain if you can't find a fun way to describe it? Oh my god, another hour already. My head freaking hurts! It sucks and stuff! I keep telling you, the painkillers will take effect in a few minutes. I'm not gonna stop yelling about it until they do! You know, some philosophers believe that experiencing pain is one of the best ways to make sure you know you're alive. Well, it's very... it's very emo sounding. Pain? Nobody likes pain. That sounds fake. Which philosophers? Famous ones? Oh my gosh, you're actually just making it up. Possibly. You could have sold it better. Say that some famous singer said it instead. Cross that generational gap. Well, cross it some more by saying a rapper said it. <laughs> you gotta appeal to the kids! I feel like every time I do that, I just end up looking like one of those old guys who's afraid of wide-ranging societal shifts. Aren't you? I mean, you are old. I'm not. You're like 6,000 years old. You gotta give me this one. Fine. He honestly doesn't look that old. I guess these are like wrinkles and stuff, but even then, it's the art. There's not enough wrinkles in his face. How is your head feeling? It still sucks. How about we grab a drink and go sit outside? It's nice and cool out there. Do I have to? Yup. Outside. Oh, this is on top of where Maddie, Ned, and Kashan were. How are you feeling now? Better. Marginally. Things existing at the margin still deserve attention. Come on, I'm sure the drink isn't hurting. What even is this? Uh, I put six sugars in it? God, <laughs> that's not gonna help with the sleep. Aw, you know me so well. So, how are things at home? Your actual home? Meh. What's that translate to in old people language? Things are normal, I guess. Mom's nearly done with her PhD. That sounds good. It is, probably. But she's pretty busy, so that means we're stuck eating microwave dinners at night. Ashley doesn't live here? That's kind of the impression I got. I thought that she was really adopted by Che and Maddie. <laughs> oh. Explains why you've barely left the place since last week. Oh, okay. I mean, I'd be here anyway. Mm, her parents kind of neglect her. True. Maybe she's a genius because her parents are geniuses too. PhDs and all. But they don't really pay attention to her. You did... ask her, right? What? If I could be here? Yeah. Don't want to invoke her wrath, do I? Heh. <laughs> she doesn't worry about me being here. You remember when she talked to Maddie about liquor licensing laws, right? Oop. Don't you love it when the government offers to sell you your rights back, after they confiscated them? <laughs> huh. I think it was more of a lecture than a conversation. After all, Maddie wasn't even doing anything wrong, aside from letting you hang around after hours. 
I'm still amazed that Maddie didn't just tell her that we're not technically subject to the regulations, since we're not registered with anyone but the council. She made the right choice. That would have been an ugly argument. But anyway, she's fine with me being here. She's got my mobile number, and as long as I respond to her check-ins, she's not gonna come and get me. Mm, I feel like you might be kinda sad about that. Good. I wouldn't want to worry her. But does she worry at all is kind of the thing. Oh. Oh. Wonderful. Ah. Hmm? My arm will get wet. Oh, we gotta get in. Oh, don't worry about it. We'll dry it off inside. Just try and enjoy the rain. We're sitting in it though. Okay. I was joking about fake philosophy earlier, but I really do think it is important to take a moment to enjoy things when you can. Rain can feel oppressive. It can stop you from going outside, doing the things you enjoy. But there's nothing like the smell of rain before sunrise. Prechikar. Yeah, it's faintly magical. Did I ever tell you that? Rain? Only about a hundred times. Huh. <laughs> I can hear it a hundred one times. It's okay. Alright, I'm actually getting kind of wet. Let's head in. So, given the fact that I'm very obviously a dork with a bleeding heart, it's definitely safe to assume that I've let people other than you stay longer than they're technically allowed. You're so emotionally repressed that I never could have guessed. It's actually impressive. Mm, from what we know of the cafe, I feel like, well, I mean, that's why they have a debt, right? Because they let people stay. Well, you know, we all have our ways of coping with persistent extreme stress. Millennial things. Why don't those poor kids just buy more money? And more avocado toast. Yep. But yeah, I do understand how you feel. The separation. The difficulty keeping your thoughts together. Oh? Hmm? Why would you understand that? Unless if you've been through it yourself. The base level feeling that something's slightly askew. And the fact, not the feeling, that your time is up. Never loved facts. Me neither. Honestly, I think it feels like having a cold, just without any of the physical symptoms. I guess that description works too. It's not quite as compelling as the one about your particles being repulsive though. Oi, that's definitely not what I meant by that one. Isn't it? It's about time. I can't believe I created these beautiful creatures and you turned them into dumb waiters. Alas, such is life. They gotta pay rent somehow, considering how many cups they drop. That's a feature, not a bug. How do they even hold a cup? With their little arm? Oh my gosh. It's to make them seem more alive. You've taught them to intentionally drop coffee cups in the name of verisimilitude? No, no, I would love for my critters to do their job perfectly, okay? Please and thank you. Maybe? I'm gonna get Maddie to start ordering cheaper cups. Paper cups. See? I'm promoting efficiency in our procurement cycles. I hate whoever gave you that management book. <laughs> procurement cycles. I'm sensing some hostility. Do I need to talk to HR? Oh my god. <laughs> Who's our HR manager? Lovelace? I'm sure it's very good at its job, just not at bussing coffee. Beep beep boop boop. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cute. And useless. Oh, her phone vibrated. Mom? Oh. Ah, Maddie wants us downstairs. Oh, I suppose she's done setting up. I'm glad she was able to do it without me. Go! 
gosh, so proud. Taught her everything I know. <laughs> you are a gremlin, you know that? Of course. Shall we? It's finally here, after all these hours. We're back! This is the very beginning prologue scene. 12 a.m. Basement, Day 3. <coughs> it's so bloody damp down here. I know we're in a cellar, but I don't suppose you have a window we could open or anything? This is the beginning! Yeah, we've got a vent that leads outside somewhere. Maddie, can you open it up? Get some fresh air coming through? I'm pretty sure it's got a dumpster or something sitting on top of it right now. Besides, I'm busy. Just grin and bear it. Hmm. Can we get this over with? We've done this before, old man. Yeah, this is the exact same... Exact same thing. You know it takes a while to set up. Calm your farm. I do not appreciate your tone. Sorry. Can we get some more lights on, maybe? With all the crap you've got scattered around the place, I'd like to at least know where I'm putting my feet. Ashley, would you mind? Yes, Ned, Kishan, Ashley, Maddie, Shay. Thanks. Even Ned's here. You're more organized than last time, I see. <sighs> Practice makes perfect. Hey, Maddie. How much more wire do we need? I think that's enough. She's got her little summoning circle. Right. Now... Che? What's up, little P? Some people use diminutive nicknames to create emotional distance. Che uses them to close that distance. Yeah, yeah, it's not always a good thing. It could be a derogative thing. I found you a chair. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're old and you need chairs. <laughs> so, this whole thing. Surely it's not legal, yeah? Yes, the council found it confronting. For good reason, I suppose. Because it utterly upsets the natural order, mate. It's not just bureaucracy. Shush you. Most rules can be bent after all. <sighs> and Maddie has a particular fascination with breaking rules. <laughs> hey, don't give her all the credit. Bah. Is this related to her gambling for time? Mm-hmm. So, the transfer... Was the same sort of magic we're doing now, yes. The council successfully suppressed all available information about it, though. For good reason! So the first time we saw this scene, Ned and Kishan were completely covered. The dialogue is the same, though, but the they're getting new scenes, new camera angles here. What happens if something goes wrong? Well, you don't tend to mess it up more than once. Or try it again after you fail, for that matter. So we already tried it once, which is not what that advice that we were given said. The one from Sophie. What do you even call this sort of magic then? Questions are relevant, because it's banned. Badass? I call it badass. Well, by definition, it's a conduit ritual. But looking past all the smoke in the mirrors and fancy names, you can just call it... Necromancy. All those hours are in this tree. Why did you hoard the hours here, instead of using them to pay off your debt? Why would I use them to pay off a debt, if I could use them to save a life instead? Yeah, I feel like the there's a very easy assumption to make that debt is a bad thing, but it's not. It's like having a mortgage, right? You don't necessarily want to pay it off just because you can. Rather, another way you can think about it is, why use your own money when you don't have to? 
Oh, shit. But whose life do you want to save? All right. Are you giving it to Kashan? I don't think so, because earlier she's like, oh, I'm gonna miss you when you're gone. How can I help? Will the subject please step forward? Oh! What? Council Gazette. We regret to inform you of the passing of Che Wu, a beloved fixture in the Australian alchemical community and owner of the terminal. <gasps> Is that why the ownership of the cafe passed on to Maddie? As an innovator in alchemy and material spellcraft, and as a friend to anyone and everyone who walked through his doors, he will be missed. He's not immortal. <gasps> He's glowing green. Oh, how long has he been here? You ready to do this again? Sure. Try not to kill me this time. Cool. Ashley, let's do this. <gasps> We never even suspected. Che is the one who's dead. But when... When? How long has he been here for? That's why they were accumulating debt. Not from random customers being around here, but Che. Their beloved Che. Does Ned know? He's gotta. Ready when you are. I hate this. You have reservations? It's unnatural to store hours in a non-sentient being like that. It can still feel pain, and this is a very painful process. For everyone involved. Yeah? Yeah. So the tree... the tree... it's literally a tree of life. Guess it's time for us to watch the show. Oh... And the itchiness and all that. Che was experiencing it the whole time, but not saying anything. Let's see how badly this can go wrong. But what happened the first time? Because Che nearly died, but he's still here. Wait, he's already dead! Yay. Calcination. Solution. Separation. Conjunction. Putrefaction. Congelation, sebation, sublimation, fermentation, exaltation, multiplication, projection, conjunction. Good enough. Ashley? Everything's nominal on my end. We're looking good, so... Let's get started. Increase power to 80%. Sebation. <gasps> oh my god, this is where they're putting the budget. Oh my god. Holding steady. Cool. Next segment. Activating. How are we doing? It's going fine. Conjunction's about halfway open. Just concentrate. The Maddie's like an alchemist. Having some issues here. Hey! We need more power! Yup, ramping it up. I don't know if this will melt our conduits though. Oh crap. Yup, our conduits are definitely melting. Ashley. Language! Sebation! Fuck! Bypass it! I can patch the wires, but I don't know what else I can... Do that! Now! On it! How close are we to finishing the sebation? We're about 90%! Oh no, oh no! 
Oh no. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Are we gonna try again? I think I have to reinforce the wires and that'll fix it. Yes. We're gonna keep going until we make it through. Do or die. Reset, then, and start again. Calcination. Separation. Conjunction. Libation. <sighs> Not again. Just a couple seconds more. And... You've got it! This is an alchemy ritual, but we need electricity too. Yes! Beginning sublimation! But we gotta make it through all the stages, right? You got this, Maddie? What's next? We've opened the connection. Now all I've gotta do is transfer the time. Oh, it's done. How are you feeling, Shay? Uh, I, I don't know. Shay? Oh, oh no, my god! Sublimation. No! Oh, okay, okay, we won't stop. We've gotten this far. I'm not giving up now, damn it! Maddie? I can't hold on to it. It's slipping out of my fingers. Energy levels are dropping again. See if you can keep it going for just a few more moments. I, uh, uh, rerouting! Did it work? No. We... could try it again? I don't plan on stopping. I think the conduit's only gonna last one more go, then it's kaput. And maybe you're kaput too. I don't know. Shit. Alright Ashley, take your position again. We'll get it this time. Stop. Just... Stop. No, I've nearly got it, I swear! You are not gonna bring me back. I... No. I've humored this enough. You've done your best. But this task is beyond you. I need to move on. And it's time to make your peace with this, instead of trying to pervert the natural course of things. You never asked me if I wanted to stay. You just made the choice for me, and hurt yourself and everyone around you in the process. Let me leave. Wow. Uh, I have so many questions, and I don't even know where to begin. Shay is the one who we were trying to save the whole time. Kishan was a smokescreen. Oh, but then, how was he... When did he die? How did he die? And... Well, I guess, I guess he died pretty recently. Not that long ago. I'm guessing when he died was when the ownership transferred to... Maddie. But then... I don't know, there's so many questions. Maybe we should just make it through this first. J 
Jacoby, you're a goddamn bin chicken, is what you are. What? No way! Crabs don't eat sushi or garbage. I mean, crabs basically is a kind of sushi, too. You can make it sushi. Crab sashimi? You don't know that! Yeah, well, you know what does eat sushi and garbage? Threskinorsis molucca, otherwise known as the Australian bin chicken. We find that term offensive. We're actually white ibises. Ha! Ha! Incriminated yourself there. <laughs> I'd expect nothing less from a bin chicken. Damn it. Okay, so moving on. So <laughs> he wasn't a crab. Classic misdirection. And a really bad one, too. No, seriously. Did you two see what happened back there? Yeah, that was rough. And yes, that thing with the ritual was also tough to watch. <laughs> what else was tough? You weren't here when Shay died, but... I remember. They just behaved like nothing bad had happened. Oh? My impression was that neither of them had ever remotely considered the possibility of failure. But they failed again. Idiots. Yes, we're only here because of them, so we should be respectful. Mm, because they were storing time in inanimate objects, and that's how they're alive. It seems to me like nobody in this cafe really seems to think things through. Yup. This place has a weird effect on people. It's the coffee. Too much magic in the air, maybe? Uh, who knows? Will they be okay? Hmm... I don't know how I'd forgive something like that. Being kept here against my will while my very essence breaks down? That is what I believe kids these days call a party foul. Honestly, I don't know. I think Maddie probably has some self-reflection to do. But Che was being kept here against his will. It's not even that they didn't ask him if he wanted to stay alive, but they didn't even give him the choice. Like, that's her sin. She kept a dead person here because she didn't want him to go. And Ned knows exactly about that. Oh man. Ritual. Marginally, Ashley. Ritual, magic. Sticks, death, obviously. Gremlin, Ashley. Facade, Maddie. Old man, shame. Oh, suddenly, all the old comments. Friend, shame. We failed again. What do we do? This whole time, we were so focused on Kishan that we never even... I never even gave a second thought to Che. Hmm... But if Ned can offer... Yeah, Ned can offer a job to Kishan. Can he do that to Shay? But he doesn't want it, actually. So that doesn't even matter anymore. Can I not leave? I gotta read something. Where is the free one? Judgment 2? Is it this one? Um, We can unlock it and try and see. Hold on, I just want to see here. No, that wasn't it. There's one more.
Maybe it's not here. Oh! Who wants to live forever? Espresso machine's acting up again, Maddie sighed. Why does it have to be like this? It doesn't have to be like this, said Shay. You're right. It wasn't always like this. If you travel back in time far enough, you'll find an era when we had a working espresso machine. And if you travel back even further, you'll get to a time when espresso machines didn't exist. Maddie reached below the counter for the bottle of Chardonnay she had opened that morning. It was half empty. Is this the prelude to one of those moments where an old man tells me about how lucky we are to have things so easy? Nah, things aren't easier. In fact, they're harder. That's why you need all the modern technology to help deal with them. Che nodded to the wine bottle in Maddie's hand. So, you gonna offer me some of that or just keep squeezing its neck like you're trying to choke it? Maddie began pouring a drink for Che. So, what were things like back in the old days? I never really questioned how Che was immortal. But he doesn't have a job with the council, so yeah, it doesn't make sense why he would be immortal, right? Oh no. So what? Was he just racking up debt the whole time? Or was Maddie slowly, but like bit by bit, giving him a few hours here and there? And just now, she tried to give him a whole bunch, but it didn't work? Well, for one thing, we didn't need glasses back then. Glasses are not a new invention, old man. I've seen pictures of Benjamin Franklin. Well, yeah, we had glasses back then, but we didn't use them. We drank straight from the bottle. Har har. No, really. Glasses are just one more thing to keep track of. One more thing to clean. It's much easier to just pass a bottle back and forth. That may be the case, but I'm sure our patrons appreciate the extra effort that goes into making sure they're always drinking from clean glasses. I'm sure they do. That's another thing that's changed. Everyone's a connoisseur of whatever they're drinking. Is that you finger-wagging about how young people all have particular tastes? No. At least, I don't think it is. I guess people are all enjoying the present moment more. Back when we drank sock juice, you were just doing whatever it took to get that stimulant into your bloodstream. Ditto for most depressants. Che's old age. Damn, how long ago did he die? Do I want to know what sock juice is? Because I'm fairly certain I don't. We didn't have coffee filters back then, so you'd use a sock instead. Ew, is that real? Don't worry, we always use clean socks whenever they were available. Maddie closed her eyes, looking physically ill. <laughs> don't they still do that for milk tea? Using tights? Or is that just a Hong Kong thing? Hong Kong style milk tea? You were saying something about people enjoying the present moment before that thoroughly awful digression about how you made coffee. Yeah. I know there's a stereotype about how in modern society, no one is ever really present, but if anything, I feel like it's the other way around. Nowadays, people are all about enjoying the present moment. People used to be way more obsessed with where they were going. As in, where they were migrating to? In a manner of speaking, Let's just say that I'm amazed at how few people these days come in here asking questions about heaven and hell. A hundred years ago, if you caught someone on their way out of this world, the first thing they wanted to know was, which place is this? And after they found out they were on a temporary stop to the next place, they'd want to know where it was they were going. There is still plenty of that. Yeah, but a lot less of it. And, you know, I don't think it was ever a case of people's priorities suddenly changing once they found themselves standing on the precipice. There were people who used to describe themselves as God-fearing. It was just a part of life. And now it's not. I guess people found more important things to worry about. There wasn't a lot going on back then. He took a sip of Chardonnay. Good thing I'm gonna live forever. Where did you go to hell? Hell yes. I've done way too much sinning to ever make it into heaven. You've done more good than ill for the world. I'm pretty sure that balances it out. Mm, I feel like we don't really know much about Che, actually. What did he used to do? Besides manage the cafe. Mm, you probably have a positive balance. Nah, 
I don't think it works like that. I'm pretty sure I'm just a bad person, who happens to do good things most of the time. Well, it might not be good enough for heaven, but it's good enough for me. So I guess it's a good thing that you're gonna live forever. But he doesn't want to live forever, though. That's the thing. We're back here. I have so many questions. And Shay. Oh, we haven't been out here for a while. Actually, when we first came in here, this was not what was here. Where was that dark alleyway that Kashan came in through? It's like... Not even here. And you should have seen this coming. Mmm, the council probably knows about our ritual now. This is on you. There is no question. You are a failure. The council is going to take the cafe away from you. And you should have seen this all coming. Episode 7, Ghost. Is Kishan still here? Okay, now that I know about Che... Oh god, I don't even have time to think about Kishan anymore. This never gets old. The sunrise? You know... I wondered for a long time how I would feel if I never got old. And then I tried it out. And I got old anyway. There's probably a moral in that story somewhere. When did we ever have time for morals anyway? You're a hellion, you know that? Even the mild-mannered can raise hell under the right circumstances. Hmm. You know, in the beginning, I was thinking the whole time, Hey, why is Maddie so hell-bent on helping Kishan? Like, I don't understand what makes Kishan so special that she'd want him around. But actually, it was... It was Shay. And that makes a lot more sense. It's weird to think that you used to just be a mild-mannered student. I was just better at biting my tongue. Ha. Huh. If anything, I just hope that I was able to make your life a little more interesting. We've, uh... We've had a pretty good run, mate. I don't want you to feel like I wasted my time on you. Or that having you in my life hasn't been an absolute bloody privilege. Can we do this later? I just... Of course. I reckon I see someone walking over. Can you get the machine ready? Again? If there was ever a moment when Maddie hoped the machine would fail her, it's now. Was she just dreaming about somebody taking away the cafe? I... Yeah. Let's make some fucking coffee. It's another day. Here you go. Again, sorry for the wait. Thanks. If it were anywhere else, I'd just not come back. But the beans. And I promise it won't happen again. Thanks for your patience. Mm-hmm. Mm. Maybe it's that person from yesterday. The one who saw Che knock over the glass. But they came back anyway. I, uh... How long was I staring at the wall? Fifteen minutes, by my reckoning. Oh, she was supposed to make coffee, but she was just staring at the wall. <sighs> what the hell? I came inside from sweeping up the front. And just saw you staring blankly into your mug. While that customer was just standing there. Oh, that's why they weren't happy. They were being very patient. I have no idea how that happened. 
I feel... Terrible? They were even trying to mislead me into thinking that maybe Maddie was the one who was dead, but oh, it's Che! It all comes back to Che! It's no biggie. Like you told me the other day. Our roasts are iconic enough that we can afford to get away with stuff like that once in a while. Well, yeah, but... The context of that conversation was when we just fought off dozens of Ashlings that didn't believe us. Ashlings. When we told them, we weren't stray pieces of cutlery. Yeah... We probably shouldn't let that happen again. Trust me, it's not on the agenda. But, like I was saying, people love this place. Even if they sometimes have to wait 15 minutes for the barista to stop hyper-focusing on our coffee. Yeah, I just... I don't know. That isn't meant to happen. How long have you been awake? I... I think maybe three days? Hmm... Not only do people not leave, but they also don't sleep. Good lord! That's bad, yeah? I'm honestly amazed you're not seeing things. Oh, I'm hallucinating hardcore. No worries there. Also, I keep seeing faces and coffees. Are they saying anything interesting? Nothing but echoes of my internal monologue. They're gonna take away the cafe from you. More espresso equals less depresso. <laughs> I'm sure it's a fun time. It's a blast. At least your hands don't need to be too steady to make coffee. See, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Shh. Anyway, speaking of coffee, you should make some. I'm already like 15 shots deep, man. I think I'll die if I have any more. No, Maddie. I'm saying you have a job to do. Sorry, I feel like you're trying to lead me into some sort of conclusion here, but... <sighs> For the customer, right here, who I assume is wanting a coffee. <laughs> Maddie's not getting it! Oh! Shit! Uh, my bad. Haven't slept for... What can we get for you? One latte, one soy flat white. <laughs> one soy flat white? What is this code? What is this jargon? I don't <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Hmm. <laughs> sure thing. Feel free to take a seat. We'll bring him over. Man. Yup. 15 shots though? Really? Uh because just saying, at some point. You're gonna hit a lethal dose. But part of why she doesn't want to go to sleep might be because... Like, well, if she sleeps, what if she wakes up and everyone's gone? Especially Che. I have some insane tolerance happening here. I think. I hope. Right. Well, I respect your right to make a complete idiot out of yourself and die in the process. I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't. Oh! That's how- that's how Che died? But earlier, he was saying, oh, uh, uh, you almost killed me, blah blah blah. Oh god. I can't believe everyone's gonna know me as a person who killed her boss in a botched necromancy attempt. Oh my god. You know? That's hella street rep right there. Council's gonna be too afraid of me to screw with me. I don't think they're too intimidated by you, fortunately. Damn it. Let's not worry about them for now, though. What should I worry about instead? Nothing? Buddy. I tried. Hey. Actually. Where's Ashley? Sleeping upstairs? We're not gonna get much out of her for the next few hours, at least. And Gajan's gone off somewhere in the terminal with Ned. They're around. Somewhere. Good that Ashley's getting some sleep, though. Imagine if you did that. I'll sleep when I'm dead. Uh, all these lines sound so ominous now. Aww. Uh -huh. But also, she's okay, right? Yup. 
Just need some rest and maybe a few days of tapering off caffeine. Oh. She's gonna be cranky. As a mule. Well, I have that to look forward to. I'm sure it'll be plenty of fun. Mmm, it sounds like they're exchanging goodbyes. Like Shay is telling Maddie, hey, take care of Ashley, and vice versa, okay? What can we... What can we get you? Hmm. What roasts do you have today? Ah. Let me see. We've got your standards. Espresso, Italian, city... No, I'm looking for something fancy. Fancy, you say? What do you have in mind? I don't know. Something new. Different. Special. Artisanal. Psst, Maddie. What? In English, that word translates to artisanal. Thanks. <laughs> Anytime, mate. Was that not English? Is that French? We've got a pretty nice house roast that you might like. The beans are sourced from a faraway land, enchanted with subtle magics. What land? Tell me. Uh... They're from Brisbane. <laughs> what else? I'll give you our secret blend if you stop holding up the line. Ah, I'll take it. Go sit down. I'll bring it over to you. What an annoying customer. What were you gonna give him? I was just gonna take a blowtorch to some espresso beans. Come on, Maddie. What? Don't be ridiculous. I don't know what you mean! I mean that it's a waste of time for you to do that when you've got people to serve. Ah. Be right back. <laughs> He's gonna do it! Spending their last days together. God, you weren't kidding! This is awful. How are you able to drink that without your entire face crumbling into dust? It's so dry to give Antarctica a run for its money. Antarctica is a desert. Technically. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> he didn't even say anything! I find it drinkable because it reminds me of the good times. Drinkable feels like it should rank right up there with passable for tepid compliments. Well, yeah, it's saying it's okay. It's passable, 60%. If you want to be happy about it, feel free, but it's definitely not a compliment. What? It's thoroughly shit house. It reminds me of lost loves. It's very worrying to me that this concentrated bin juice reminds you of a relationship. <laughs> Maybe it was a really bad one. Oh, I've told you about her. Oh, that one minor demon? Wait, you're not talking about... Yup, the fugitive. <laughs> the minor demon that was on the run? The one who I took in for a few months. I thought you liked her. I did. The taste reminds me of her because it's smoky. Like licking a freaking tailpipe. And has vague hints of iron. I have concerns, Che. Never thought I'd have a succubus drop by, to be honest. Oh, an actual succubus? Oh, there are all sorts of weird things in this world. Wait, you never told me she was a succubus. Didn't I? Well, I suppose it would have been inappropriate to mention that in front of Ashley. Is that why you fell for her? <laughs> oh yeah, her head would definitely explode. But yes, she was a succubus. I wouldn't have ever expected a cute demon to crash at my bar, but ended up having a wonderful, if short-lived, relationship. Flings can cram a lot of passion into a few days. Some people think that kind of passion density shouldn't be possible. Well, love makes people crazy. Something something endorphins. That's actually really sweet. <laughs> yeah. Still weird that the coffee reminds you of her, though. But I've heard weirder things. Mm hmm. If I explain it to you, your head would explode too. Uh. Well, you mentioned tailpipes. Okay, that's it. 
Well, that's my break time over. Time to get back to work, running a cafe, doing barista things. I'm gonna go perform some barista-related activities, and you're welcome to join me, I guess. <laughs> Don't forget to water the plants! Maddie need Wait, which plant? The big tree? Water them yourself. It's your job. Busy! Goodbye! Well, we're still in good spirits, although I assume that Che is gonna go very soon. 